I'm Ryan with Proton Electric, and in this video I want to show you how I make Christmas balls. I'm going to start out with the basic structure of the Christmas balls, and I use this stuff. I got it at the local hardware store. It comes in about a round um, little container like this, about this big. It's 14 gauge welded aluminum wire. That's for the structure, structure of the foundation. And I tie it all together using just simple aluminum wire that will hold its shape. And then I can tighten like that real tight around something. The tighter this stuff is, the better. Here's the fencing I use. And it is, uh, it's called poultry netting. And this actually comes in like a four foot roll, but I cut it in two to make it e more easily wrapping, to wrap around the, the globe and to maneuver it and to kind of work it. It is important that you have a short, a smaller piece or you're gonna get like real weird shapes around your ball and it won't look like a really nice circle. So that's the netting. Now I'm gonna go into how I make the foundation. Grab this, and I kind of use my imagination. And I say, I want it to be about this big. So I hold it there. And then I'm going to cut it. Take it like this. Then I'm going to turn it and make sure, you know, I'm, I'm getting a really pretty circle. On the ends, I kind of bring them in, keep it low key. It's important also, I discovered, to have a good pair of gloves. The wire that we're gonna be using here is really hard on the fingers, so you'll do well. And also try to get a glove that you can use your iPhone with. So here's what we're gonna do, I'm gonna take one, and let's just say we want it about 18 inches. I'm gonna grab a little piece of this wire, the kind of like a bailing wire, aluminum bailing wire. I'm gonna wrap it around, just the first time to hold it. Pair of Kleins or lineman pliers. These are great because they're gonna actually help you pull the wire tight. Everything's nice and tight. Then we're gonna wrap it around. And pull it tight a little bit. And wrap it around again. Now we're going to be duplicating what I'm doing here about five or six times. So at the top of the circle, we get a second tie wire and I just tie them twice, just kind of like that. Um, and sometimes you have to bend the, the corner in to get a really nice circle. And I put this up against that roll that I just showed you. I get about the same length and I do it again and again and again. And you're going to need about five pieces the same diameter. So for the second ring, I'm going to just kind of roll it off distance wise. I'm gonna end where the first one was, and then I'm gonna cut it with my Kleins, set it aside, and I'm gonna keep making these. So now I'm making two a smaller diameter than the five original circles that I'm using for the structure. And I'll show you where we're going to put these, but basically just know it's going to be about two thirds the, the diameter of the large one. So we're just going to decrease the size a little bit and it's just going to help with structure. So that's one of the small ones. And we want to make two small ones. So we're going to use the first one as our template and match the second one to the first one, kind of like we did for the first five. There's two circles, the little ones. And then I've got five large ones. And that's going to be the same for any ball you do. If you follow this model, you can just make them larger. So now I'm going to begin putting all these little circles together into a sphere that looks like this. 
there are some tricks that we need to make sure we work through. So the first one, I like to work everything at 90 degree angles and perpendicular to one another. So if I'm putting my first two together, you can see that the intersection obviously is 90 degrees to one another. And I just kind of eyeball it. I want everything to be halvesies. I'm going to take a tie wire. I'm going to do the bottom. Now I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to do the top. I'm going to pull it down. And at this point you'll see some flailing because we have yet to tie it off and, and make the structure. But It'll be loosey-goosey for a little bit. So here's the first. That's kind of the, the method we're gonna do. We'll add another one and we'll just crisscross. Now here we have most of the foundation and the next is we're just gonna take this and kind of go half. Put this over it. This is really gonna make it pretty strong where a lot of your strength comes from. So I slip it in pretty much half. That's what I'm looking for. And then they're still kind of collapsing, but as we work ourselves, work our way around the circle and where we put it all together, it'll start looking a little bit more uniform and like a sphere. So I, I took my first perpendicular circle. That's what this one we're working on here. I started at the top and I'm just gonna turn it around the opposite. I find just working opposites all the way around this thing really helps it with uh, being a, a, a better circle. And I kind of have like these little ties are about four to five inches. I put a little shepherd's hook in it and it gives me the ability to pull it tight and kind of wind it around things. Okay, this is a nice structure and this would probably work, but I like overkill and I like to know it's going to last year after year. So I'm going to put in a few more supports. Here's a small one and we're just going to set it at the top, place it straight on. Just like that. I'm going to pick one spot to begin and then I'm just going to work the opposite side and just keep doing that all the way around. So you just watched me make our sphere. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the, some people call it pig fence, but I guess it's poultry netting. We're going to take this and there's a couple tricks to this too. And I wanted to show you that was one of the biggest issues I had with very few tutorials out there um, of getting this like in a really nice circle. So like I said, at the top of the video, this comes in about a four foot length and what I used and I kind of have this weird tool around as a grinder and I just cut it in two with my grinder. You could also use something like a sawzall and cut it with a sawzall, one of these. And this is probably like, what, 12 or 13 or 14 inches wide. And I find that to be a really good uh, width pretty much for any size ball you're gonna make. It's pretty maneuverable. And here's what I got. That's what this is. So we're gonna unwind it. I like to start my circles around, going around. So I just look at this as the top and the bottom where my hands are and I take the center and I like to go around the center first. I feel like it going around that gives it a better circular angle or circular look. So I take the pig fence. I'm just going to put it up to one of these wires and I'm just going to use my thumbs and go all the way around. This is where the gloves come in handy because this stuff's pretty sharp. Okay, so now you can see 
how that looks. I just wrapped all these around and they're pointed, so we gotta watch that. I'm gonna pull it. I'm just gonna go all the way around. I'm gonna measure it and I like to overlap these. You know, you really don't have to overlap them much. I just overlap them about an inch or two. Then I'm gonna take my tin snips. They have to be old, they have to be rusty and they have to be gnarly or they won't work. So I'm gonna take my old rusty gnarly tin snips, snipping along the center of kind of like this diamond shape. What I'm trying to save every time that we cut this poultry fencing is the little knob at the top because that's what we're gonna to use to wrap around itself, nice and tight. So I pull it tight and then I just wrap it around. And this is a process wrapping around. There's so many loose ends to this stuff. so. It takes a while and I just go through it. And once you're working the circle, you can get a feel for it. So now we have the first round uh, netting. Now what I do is I take my netting and I kind of begin where I left off, but I'm just gonna connect the two you see how I have this going around the what I call the middle. I'm just going to take it from here. I'm going to go around the top and I'm just going to meet the other side. And I'm going to cut. So I'm just going over the top. I'm going to do the same on the bottom. I'm going to take this. I'm going to go along the bottom. So then I'm going to do the same thing is just find the edge of the wire and I'm just taking those little knobs I told you about and I'm just going to wrap them around their support which was the first set of netting going around the middle and then this is going to be strong enough to where I can kind of pull it tight around the top down into the other side. And this is what I found makes really good circle because we're going around the center. For some reason that seems to work. Then we're going to go around the top. We're going to go around the bottom. So the majority of it is already in a circle now. And that leaves these two portions right here without netting. This little part and this little part. So what I found works best is of course we're going to take this um, contour that's kind of sticking out. I'm going to bring it down and then I'm going to take a little piece that I've already cut off. You know, it's like 14 inches or so, and you can cut it to length. So I'm just going to place it over that little portion that needed to patch. I'm going to kind of cut it and tailor it because I don't want too much overflow. So I'm going to take my little piece. This is about, what, 16 inches. And I'm just going to place it over that last little piece that uh, didn't get covered. And I'm going to take these little whiskers and I'm just going to push them down and push them in. And then I'm going to take them. I'm going to try to wrap them around the base and the frame as much as possible so they're not bowing out. And you just work it and pull it tight and, and bring the little whiskers in and around the other netting and fencing and then you work it just like that and then it begins to look like this now the last part is what do we do with the lights so i like to get more rather than less and i chose this from amazon it looks like zoica lighting and this is a really good buy it's like 300 feet for like 39 dollars 
Um, just a note, lots of people had difficulty unraveling this. You basically just have to study it when you unravel it. Just take your time, take your time, don't get frustrated or end up in a big knot and that would be worse than if you took your time. So we're just going to untangle this or unwrap it. This is plenty of lights. I'm going to set the ball down. And then this is just like a ball of yarn. We're just going to wrap it in every direction. And then we're just going to fill it up. And then if you need to change directions, just take one of these little whiskers, wrap it around the light, and then just go the opposite direction. And we're going to spiral it all around and then that's that's how you install the lights. And at the very end, you'll, you may not want these again, but I like to just flag the end of it. Because if I ever have to find the end one day, I need some indication of where it is. So I'm just gonna put like a little piece of tape or something waterproof or something so I can find out where the end is. And if I need to get these back, I'll know where it is. Otherwise, it's gonna be very difficult finding the end. So now we're gonna plug this in. Awesome. There you go. I hope this was helpful. Merry Christmas.